Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about how to get prepared for power outages. Some people call it a brownout, some people call it a blackout. Now let me tell you, this video is going to cover a whole different ways to prepare for power outages. So no matter what your budget is, there'll be something here for you. Now the rainy season is coming here in the Philippines, which means more power outages. So that kind of incentivized me to finally make this video. This is a video I've been thinking about making for years. Um, so if you do find it helpful, please give a thumbs up and share it with your friends so more people can learn from this. So let's start with our first one, and this is the one that gives you the most bang for buck. If you already have a car, you already have a generator. A lot of people think you have to go out and buy a diesel generator, big expensive diesel generator, to keep your appliances running when the power goes out. But the truth is, if you already have a car, you already have a generator. All you need is a DC to AC inverter, something like this. Let me bring it closer to the camera. So you can see this one here actually has a UK plug, but depending on where you buy it, what country you're in, it's going to have a different plug and a different AC voltage output. Now you might have noticed this one plugs into the cigarette lighter socket. It also comes with little clamps like this. Hopefully you can see that on the camera, these clamps here. Also comes with clamps to connect directly to the battery. And if you want to get the full power out of this, you do actually have to connect it directly to your battery. So how does it work? Well, I've got one here from CDR King. So this is what I'm saying. This is for everyone, no matter what your budget is. This one is a good quality branded one. This one here is from CDR King and it's very affordable. So I've clamped it onto my battery. All I have to do is turn it on, flick on my extension lead. We have a CFO light bulb here and a fan here. They're running directly from the battery right now. Let me turn it off because the noise is probably gonna be a bit much. Now something to remember is you don't want to drain your battery down. So what you actually wanna do is start your car up and have the motor running while you're doing this. Now, if your car has air conditioning, you wanna make sure you turn that on because most cars that have air conditioning, the cooling fan is actually tied into that aircon system. So make sure you turn that on. Now, this is not ideal because leaving your car sitting in one place running for hours at a time, it's not ideal because if it's a very hot day, your engine could get hot. So you wanna keep an eye on the temperatures. But if it's rainy season, chances are it's not gonna to be too hot and the cooling fan will actually manage to keep your car cool enough. So I'll just bring the camera closer so you can take a better look at this. So you can see I've got my DC to AC inverter from CDR King. It comes with these clamps to go directly to the battery. So let's just clamp that on. And then on the end here, you can see it's got a universal plug. So I just plugged an extension cord into that so we can get more than one socket. So if I switch that on, and then switch on my extension, you can see the CFL bulb comes on and the fan behind me also comes on. So it's really that simple. These are very affordable. The only thing I'd recommend is to make sure you buy one with a built-in fan. They do sell some that don't include a fan and they overheat, so make sure you buy one with a fan. And hopefully you can hear me over the noise of the car. This is how you're meant to run it with the engine going because you don't want your battery to get drained down to nothing. So now if we turn it on, you can see it still works, but this time the engine is running and it's keeping our battery charged. So let's move on to our next tip. Now this next one is really simple. USB power banks. Most people have one of these to keep their phone charged when they're out and about during the day. But if you buy a high capacity one, it can be a lifesaver when the power goes out. Not only can you charge your cell phone, but you can also buy USB LED bulbs like this. So let's plug this one in. So you can see you could hang that around your house. You could buy a number of these, you get a USB hub and like hang a bunch of these around your house for lighting. You can also get LED strips like this. These can be really bright. Let's plug this one in. So you can see, there you go, we've got the LED strip. These might not look too bright on camera because I have lighting from above plus sunlight, but I assure you these are more than bright enough to light up the inside of your house when the power goes out. Aside from lighting, you can also use it to recharge these little USB fans. Now these have a battery inside, but they can also be recharged or run directly from a power bank. These are ideal when the power goes out because they can keep you cool. So not only do you have lighting, but you also have cooling. Plus, you can charge your cell phone. And there's another reason why I like these power banks. Unlike lead acid batteries, which have to be maintained over time, they can be a little bit complicated for some people to use. These are super simple. You just charge it using your existing phone charger, your USB charger, and that's it. When the power goes out, you can use this for whatever you want. Now, if money is no problem, I recommend you buy a high capacity power bank that supports Quick Charge 3.0, and then buy a Quick Charge 3.0 charger for the wall. What that means is that when the power is on, you can charge the power bank super fast. And that's important because for many people, they'll have power for say two hours, 
then they won't have power for 10 hours, then they'll have power for two hours, and so on. It's like a rolling blackout or a rolling brownout. So being able to recharge your power bank as fast as possible is super important. So if you want the quickest way possible, you buy a QC 3.0 power bank and a QC 3.0 charger. Now, if you're on a budget, you can buy a Penang or a Romos power bank. Both of those, they don't use the best quality plastics and the output and input may not be the best, but generally they have the genuine capacity batteries inside. The only downside is there are many, many fakes or clones. So if you buy the Penang brand, there should be a sticker on the back that you can scratch off with a coin and then you can check the serial number on the official website. If it doesn't have that sticker, most likely it's a fake and you should try and get your money back. So power banks are very underrated, but extremely useful and they're so simple for everyone to use. You've got lighting, you've got calling and you can keep your cell phone going. That's pretty much what most people want. And for those with a very large budget, you can actually buy a power bank like this, which has a built-in AC socket. So not only do you have USB ports, but you also have an AC socket. So if I plug this extension cord in, you can see our CFL light bulb has come on and so has our fan. So if your budget is enough, you can actually buy a power bank like this. This one is from RAV Power. This was sent to me for a review. I'm making a video soon. So there are options like this available if you have the budget. And a continuation of the power bank theme are these little power banks that are designed to jumpstart your car. Well, they don't just have to be used for jumpstarting your car. You could also use them to run a DC to AC inverter. So earlier we connected this to the car battery. Let's say we don't have a car to connect our inverter to. Perhaps we bought this power bank specifically for this purpose. Let's hook it up and see how it goes. So I've connected the clamps together and the inverter's turned on. Let's connect our load. I have to be careful that these wires don't touch each other. And there you go, you can see that the jump start pack is running the fan and the little light over here. Now, I wouldn't say this is an ideal solution because these jump start packs don't have any fan built in. If you compare it to the RAV power power bank I showed a few minutes ago, that one has a fan built in to keep the batteries cool. So I would be very careful about putting a high load on this for a long time, but it can work. It's not something I'd recommend, but it is another option and you could do your own testing to see how reliable and how safe it is over time. Now another cost effective option is to buy a UPS. These are typically designed for desktop computers. The idea is that when the power goes out, it will continue to power the computer for 10 or 15 minutes, long enough for you to save all your work and shut the computer down without losing any data. Now these might only run your desktop computer for 10 or 15 minutes, but they can run a DSL modem and a phone charger for much, much longer because of course those things don't consume as much power. Now what a lot of people don't know is that when your power goes out, your phone line and internet are normally still working. The only reason you can't use them is because you don't have any electricity going to your modem or your router. But if you use a UPS, you can actually continue to power your router and stay online. So this is really a cost efficient way of doing it with a UPS. Inside here, what you'll find normally is a little 12 volt, seven amp hour battery like this. Um, the only downside is that over time, they do tend to deteriorate, especially if they get discharged and recharged like often if you have a lot of power outages. So you might have to replace the battery every one or two years, um, but it, they are replaceable. You don't have to throw the whole thing away. You just replace the battery. So that's another very simple way of dealing with power outages. You don't have to use it for a computer. You can use it for other stuff and it will power it much, much longer. Now the next option is portable solar panels. These are USB based solar panels. You unfold them, put them out in the sun and plug in your gadget to charge. They do not store electricity. So you have to use it straight away. If we look at the end here, Hopefully you can see there's two USB ports there. So the idea is that you plug your cell phone in there or your power bank, put this out in the sun, charge them up. Very simple to use. They're not that cheap. You are paying a premium for the fact that they're portable and that the solar panels are so thin and light, but they work. Now this one is from Anchor, but you can also get them from other brands. The nice thing about these is you can put them out in the sun during the day and then bring them back in at night. So you don't have to worry about anyone stealing it or any complicated installation. Very simple. Now, of course, the next option is traditional solar power. You buy a solar panel like this. It could be a traditional aluminum framed and glass one or a portable one like this. You buy a charge controller and you buy a deep cycle battery. Now, this battery is way too small. What you want to do is buy a large solar battery or deep cycle battery. Um, the reason why I'm using this one is I couldn't realistically fit the bigger one on camera. 
But the idea is that the solar panel goes through this charge controller and that pumps power into your battery. Then you could connect a DC to AC inverter or you could connect 12 volt loads directly to this. So that's another option is going fully solar. Now, of course, one downside of this is that during the rainy season, your solar panels are not gonna generate much power, but there's another option and extensions to this. So let me set it up and show you. Now this one is really, really simple. You use your deep cycle battery. Again, you'd use a much bigger one than this, but you buy a AC to DC smart charger. The nice thing about these smart chargers is you can leave it plugged into your wall and connect it to the battery permanently, 24 seven. You don't have to do any kind of maintenance. You don't have to plug it in and out. You can just leave it connected all the time. What that means is that your battery is always getting topped up. Whenever your house has electricity, your battery is getting topped up. Again, that's perfect for rolling brownouts or rolling blackouts. When the power is up, your battery is getting charged. When the power goes down, you connect your inverter or you connect your 12 volt loads directly to your battery. And if you need a really high capacity battery storage, this is pretty much the cheapest way to do it. You buy a really big deep cycle battery. This is not a big one, you buy a big one. You buy a smart charger preferably a high amperage one so we can charge it really fast. Then you buy a DC to AC inverter and that's it, you're set up. You don't need a car, you don't need the sun. All you need is that occasionally you have electricity inside your house to keep the battery bank topped up. So that is actually one of the easiest and cheapest ways to get a high capacity off-grid battery storage solution. So I think that's pretty much every solution I can think of. If you have any, put it in the comment section down below. Like I said, I didn't go into too much detail about each solution because it would make the video too long and nobody would watch it. Now, I know some people are gonna say, oh, you should do this, but you shouldn't do that. Feel free to make corrections or suggestions in the comment section. It's open to everyone, as long as you stay reasonable. Um, anybody who's abusive, the comment will get removed. Um, so yes, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I had a lot of problems when I was shooting this video. My camera started playing up. I had some technical issues. This video was a lot harder to shoot than you think. So yes, thank you for watching.